Hey guys and welcome in today's video. I want to show you guys a little review of the Topaz Gigapixel software. This is a really great software to have if you want to upsize your images to create really nice looking prints or if there's really any reason why you need to upsize an image, Gigapixel is absolutely amazing and I'm going to show you guys why in this tutorial here. Now I normally shoot on a Sony a7R 4 which has over 60 megapixels so I usually don't need to resize any of my images to upsize them to print because 60 megapixels is a lot but I used to shoot on an older Canon camera that only had 20 megapixels. So 20 megapixels isn't really enough to print like 40 inches by 60 inches or if you wanted to go even bigger it definitely wouldn't be enough. Now you can use Topaz Gigapixel software to upsize your image and to make it fit that larger size a little bit better. I really like using the software for upsizing. Um, it's specifically designed for upsizing your image. So for any reason that you need to upsize your image you can use this whether it's your images are low quality or you saved a lower quality version or maybe it's a scan of a photo or whatever it is if you need to upsize it topaz gigapixel ai has what you need i'm going to show you guys a little bit about how to use it and then talk about why you would want to get it so we're going to jump right on in so first things first you'll probably notice that we're in photoshop i just want to show you guys how to measure the size i like using photoshop just to compare my images and check the size so when you're in photoshop you can use command r to pull up the ruler or control r on a pc and you can go and make sure that you go to preferences and go down to units and rulers. I prefer using inches, but for those of you outside of the United States, you guys might wanna use centimeters. Um, but when we're talking in print, let's talk inches or centimeters um, rather than in pixels because pixels for print doesn't make sense. So when I'm here, you can see that this image, this is totally unresized or anything like that. Resizes out to be about 18 and a quarter inch by a almost 12 inches down here. So a 12 by 18, that's not gonna make a very large print. Obviously that's 12 inches by 18 inches would be the print size. And you can see when I zoom in, it's not super detailed. I mean, it's a 20 megapixel photo, but I'm gonna show you guys how we can make it look more like a 60 megapixel photo and make it a little bit larger. Let's go ahead and jump into Topaz Gigapixel here. This is the interface that you get when you open the software. So what I like to do is just drag and drop the image that I wanna resize right in there. And it's gonna take a second to load out. Now, you've got lots of different options here, um, but the way that I'm doing it right now, I have it scaling to a custom amount. So if you just want to say double the scale, you can just hit 2x. Um, you can even half the scale to make it smaller, but usually you're gonna wanna be increasing the size. So if you do a 2x scale, you can look down here to see how many pixels it's resizing to. You can see it's going from 5472 to 10944. Um, in terms of pixels, but again, I like to use inches here because we're talking in print. So let's go ahead and go to width. And if you had an idea on this photo of that you wanted to print in a 40 by 60, let's say, uh, the width of this photo would need to be 60. Uh, the pixels per unit is gonna be 300. This might be set to 72 when you load in here. Change it to 300 because for the most part, printers are gonna be printing uh, 300 pixels per inch. Uh, so for the width, we're gonna go with 60 and it's gonna automatically resize. Now you can see down here we're sizing from, and when we switch this to inches, this also switches to inches here. So you can see that we're going from 18 and a quarter by 12.16, which is what we said we had in Photoshop. And we are increasing that by uh, 3.29, we're multiplying by 3.29 essentially to get us to 40 by 60. It's gonna update here. Now you can see we can scroll around the image. On the left side is the before, and on the right side is the after does take a second to load out. Make sure when you're looking at the preview that the uh, bar is all the way loaded out. You can see now on the right, obviously a lot more detailed than it is on the left. So this is essentially giving us the three times multiplier. So it's essentially giving us a 60 megapixel. It's obviously not as good as actually being on scene with a 60 megapixel camera because we are using technology to size it up. But um, looking back, like I don't have the opportunity to go back and shoot this at 60 megapixels. So it gives me the option to upsize it in post-processing better than I could ever have imagined before. So now of course you have a lot of options and when you're choosing these options, make sure you're on a highly detailed area. That's why I'm hovering over this tree here. And you, first of all, we can choose the AI model. For landscape photos, I find that usually standard is going to be the way to go. You can use low resolution or very compressed if you've got a very, very pixelated image that you're trying to upsize quite a bit. But for most landscape photography applications, standard is going to work perfect for you. Uh, 
Now you can come down to the settings. I like to just check this box here to turn this on. That just makes it so the AI automatically selects. But if you are noticing that it's adding noise or it's not removing enough blur, you can increase these manually yourself. Now you've got the options for additional settings. I like to check the reduce color bleed on and I don't touch the face refinement since this is a landscape photo. Now you'll see up top that we are looking at this photo at 100% right now, which means on the right side here, you are seeing the 40 by 60 preview of this image. So my computer screen is not 40 by 60 inches wide, um, but I'm looking at this as if this was 40 by 60. So it's taking up just a portion of my screen. Now, you may want to zoom out so you could go back to 50%. You're not going to see as much of a difference, but when we're working with prints, you can stay at 100% and it's going to work really, really well. But of course, like I said, you can zoom out if you want to adjust some of these other settings. So they do have that option there. You can see the software is really, really easy to use. So after we do that, we're pretty much just going to hit save image and then we're going to be totally done. So we'll go ahead and hit save. Now you have the option to rename it. Uh, I like to save it as a JPEG, maximum quality. You also have the option if you wanted to save it as a TIFF, you could do that as well before you send it off to the printer. Um, or I mean, even if you wanted to keep editing the photo, you could save it as a TIFF as well. Uh, you can change the color profile if you like. I'm just gonna leave it on sRGB for the sake of this tutorial. And the save directory, we're gonna save it in the same place as the source image. You can see it totally renames this file. It renames it with the original name and then standard width, uh, 18,000 pixels, gigapixel. You can go ahead and hit save and that will take just a second to save. When we load it out here, uh, you can see the bar comes across. It's really nice because you can do a batch editing. So you can do multiple images at once. You can queue them up and then save them all at once. And uh, it, it does take a little bit of time when you're upsizing because you can imagine the AI software really has to go to work to upsize it. So um, if you have a slower computer, go ahead and grab some coffee or some tea while you do this and just let it load out. But I am going to fast forward until this is done here in the video and we'll catch you guys in Photoshop on the other side. Alrighty guys, so I am loaded back into Photoshop. Now I always like to do this just so that I can preview here and you can see now this is a 60 by 40 here. Uh, one thing that you can do when you're printing is zoom in and down here on the bottom left, you'll see the percentage. If you zoom in until it's at 100%, once again, you'll be looking at the same thing as before, whereas this will be the size of the print. You can see it looks really good. These leaves over here are blurry just because when I shot it, uh, the leaves were moving. But otherwise, you can see this print is going to look really, really nice. The software did a really good job. And like I said, I verified that it is 60 inches by 40 inches. And the other thing I like to do is I've actually put the image, the larger image on top of the other image, the starting image that we looked at originally. And you can zoom in here and you can toggle the before and the after, the before and the after. So you can see it added quite a bit of resolution there and pixels. So looks really good. I have no complaints about it. Uh, I really like this software for upsizing photos. I think it's one of the best upsizing softwares on the market. So like I said, I think the results speak for themselves. It worked really, really easily on this image. It took me just a few minutes to figure it out and make it look really good. All right, guys. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully that was helpful to see Topaz Gigapixel. It's a software that I honestly didn't know anything about until very recently. And then I've been fortunate enough to been able to try their software. It works really, really good. And I really like using it. So I've included a link down below where you can pick up this software at. If you're gonna pick up the software, please use the link. Uh, it's just an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me to make a little bit of money if you do purchase the software. And I'm not being paid to make this video. I just really think it's a good software that you should pick up, especially if you've got a camera with a lower megapixels and you wanna make some big prints. It works really, really good. The AI software is incredible. Thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.